May the words that I say and the words that you hear be in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. When I was in high school, there was this Episcopal youth overnight thing called Emmaus. It was based on a model of adult formation called Crucio that maybe you've even been a part of. Um, but you attend a weekend for three days and it, there's time of personal sharing, faith stories, and learning about a um, personal relationship with God that for me at the time was completely new and exciting. I loved my time at Emmaus. I went once as my first weekend, and then you're welcome back to attend as a table leader, kind of as a shepherd for a new teens going through this process. The first night there is an introduction where you gather into small groups and ask yourself this repeating question of, um, who are you? And it was one-on-one. -on -one. So who are you? So, uh, who are you? Well, I'm Colin. Who are you? I am a Red Sox fan. Who are you? And the questions kind of repeat, repeat, repeat. Um, all of this is to move us towards a conversation that, uh, at our core, car, hmm, at our core, uh, we are children of God. I think back on that exercise regularly when I think about all of the labels and layers that I place upon myself as a spiritual being taking part in this physical life for however long I'm on this plane. I have many titles, even now. Colin, husband, father, priest, rector, pastor. The list goes on. I'm not alone. I'm sure if you were to write down all the different title, titles and labels that you have, um, the list is, is many. The gospel today is challenging. It's challenging on any other year, but it's challenging even particularly in 2020 when we hear Christ speak that he wasn't here to bring peace, but almost to bring chaos, and that brother would fight sister, and uh, mother-in-law would fight daughter-in-law, daughter and son against father, that there'd be this conflict. And in one way, we may hear this gospel this morning and think, well, yep, that sounds all about right. And we can list the people in our family who we're not agreeing with right now, whether it be because of politics or religion, or whatever it may be. I'm not sure Christ had this sort of interpersonal conflict, the, this kind of civil war within families around politics when he was preaching this gospel. And I think a lot of this has, a lot of this boils down to this idea of title. See, for Jesus, he sees us as what we are, children of God, beloved children of God. And as beloved children of God, as our core title, we move through this existence. And we may interact differently with those around us, depending on the title or the hat or the layer, however you want to talk about it, um, that we have on at this moment. So it's possible that I, as son, relate differently to mother than I, as husband, relate to wife, or as rector, as I relate to congregation. When Christ talks about the chaotic disruption uh, of these, this infighting, he's talking about these layers being at war with themselves. Because there are moments where uh, my life as son or son-in-law may disagree with father-in-law around politics or religion, whatever it may be. And those, those labels are at war. Let's use something less vague. Let's talk about my title as one who votes Democrat versus the title of one who votes Republican. 
there are inherent differences between these two titles, which would suggest that we might not get along. And in a different sphere, a different year, a different understanding of America, these two titles might simply be different, but they can have conversations together. But as it stands right now, these titles are at war. These titles bring out our differences and bring conflict uh, to the table. What Christ is suggesting with this discussion of layers and labels in the gospel today is that when we strip away the filters in which we view the world, at our core is a beloved child of God. And if instead of seeing layers and labels of those around me, Republican, Yankee fan, Tom Brady supporter, whatever it may be, I stripped that away and saw a child of God, how then would my interactions be different? If I did not see political party or race or gender or religion, but saw what we were at our core, I would reckon I treat that person differently. We see this in the Old Testament reading this morning, too, in this kind of beautiful, inclusive reading from Genesis, where we hear the story. This is where our Judeo-Christian Muslim paths diverge, right? This is where uh, Abraham and Sarah go this way, and Hagar and Ishmael go this way. This is the root of our Muslim brothers and sisters. And in our textbook, we don't have God forsaking them, but we said we hear God say, listen, I'm not looking at your label. I'm not looking at who you are or where you are, but I see that you're beloved, you're protected. And just like Sarah and Abraham are going to have their own descendants, I will grant you your descendants because you are a beloved child of God. I'm recording this sermon. It's in the afternoon on Saturday. There's a rally in three hours in Tulsa, Oklahoma, where we are going to, on the streets, see conflict over massive and maybe even irreconcilable differences where we see the underbelly of this country and how complicated it is. I'm not sure what 12 hours from now is going to look like, 18 hours from now is going to look like, but I imagine somewhere between now and present time when you're watching this, um, there has been much drama, maybe even chaos, maybe violence disrupted out of this scene. I'm not suggesting we go through the world colorblind, ignoring the experience of the other. In fact, the opposite. Our layers and labels give us a sort of worldview that if we were going to love the Christ, the God within our neighbor, we have to empathize with the impact that those labels have presented us. I can't simply ignore the blackness of my African-American brothers and sisters and say, well, I just love you for the God that you are because the God that they are has been impacted by that blackness. Just like I cannot ignore the irreconcilable political differences of another culture or class or political party if I'm going to love them because I must understand where they're coming from. So this is the challenge. The challenge that's presented in front of us as Christian, as, as God-loving children, beloved children of God this morning, is that how do we rip out the layers and the labels? How do we rip out the name, the titles, the academic status, the culture status, and allow the God, the loving God within us to take root and to shape so that we may love the God, 
the loving God, the presence of God in our neighbors. I've started to rethink the way I hear the word namaste at the end of a yoga class. If you've been to yoga and maybe you've been on your own or maybe even St. Peter's, you know that classes end with this moment where the yoga instructor uh, bows and says uh, namaste to the class and the class says namaste to the instructor. Some instructors translate this in different ways. The, the God in me says hi to the God in you. The spirit in me says spirit in you. I once heard this as kind of a, a sweet, like the, there's a piece of me that says greetings to the piece of you. I think that greeting, that namaste, speaks to the point that Christ is getting at in the gospel. That when we rip out those layers and labels, and we see ourselves and our neighbors as we truly are, the only greeting can be namaste. This spirit of love that burns inside of me, that calls me to church, that calls me to sit in front of a screen and watch a sermon or go to church on Zoom, the spirit that longs to be with others, other Christians, other believers, it greets that same spirit in you, regardless of your label or the layers between you and I. Because the same that God that loves me is the same God that loves you and the same God that loves them. And it's that God that we worship and praise this morning. Amen.